we do welcome everyone. It's good to see all who are with us. Let's all stand as Al comes and leads us in our call to worship and opening prayer. Number 15, come by found of every blessing. kindergarten through the sixth grade uh, for that week. So that's a little over a week, a week away, so we'll be having vacation Bible school and that will be taking place then. Um, business meeting at the end of the month, the 28th, uh, after the morning worship. Uh, and if anything that you can do or help with vacation Bible school, there are some articles here. Uh, see the different teachers, uh, either uh, Sandy Davis, she's in the back, Debbie Deborah Trimmey or Renee Bryant uh, concerning what they may or may not uh, have or use as far as with or for Vacation Bible School. There are a list of few things here for Vacation Bible School. I have a sleeping bag. Say what now? I have a sleeping bag. Jason might need that. <laughs> okay, yes. Oh, I don't want to get popcorn teachers. So. 
who are teaching it to that they stay for 30 now. Uh, also, uh, the teachers, uh, uh, as far as involved with vacation Bible schools, today, sometime either before the banquet or right after the banquet or whatever, we need to get together for a few minutes just to go over the scheduling. I do have a schedule that I have, and I'm hopefully that the other teachers have the schedule also for as far as plugging in and seeing what we can come up with that. Uh, so we need to get together for a few minutes, either be before or after, and I'm getting a word here over here from the left-hand side that we have to go after. So it'll probably be after the banquet, hopefully uh, teachers and all involved with vacation Bible School. So we can have a brief meeting, if you can, if you can do it, uh, if, you can, if you can be here, or, but mostly just the teachers to, to get the scheduling, uh, as far as the scheduling, but understand that you know we'll, we'll have this, and uh, this will be taking place like, again in about a week. Not this coming week, but the following week, the 23rd through the 26th, uh, here at Bayou Baptist Church. Any other announcements we need to be aware of? Again, uh, remember we will have our banquet after the morning worship. No evening worship this evening, but we will have Wednesday night Bible study and prayer meeting this coming Wednesday at. 7 p.m. back in the kitchen area. Uh, so keep these things uh, in mind of all that's going on and all that's taking place here at Bayou Baptist Church. Al will come at this time and lead us in a hymn. One hundred and forty-five, alas, and in my Savior will. Vacation Bible School here at Bayou Baptist Church and all the area churches in Slotel area that are and will be doing Vacation Bible School, teaching young ones about Jesus. So pray for that um, and others as well. Just remember them in prayer. I'd ask you to remember the, the Martin family, Curtis Martin and his family. Uh, for those who do not know, but I know you probably know of Curtis Martin. They have given him anywhere from a week to a month to basically live. He has terminal cancer. They've sent him home with hospice. And so he, it doesn't, so that, as far as that part of it doesn't look like it. Knowing Curtis Martin, 
myself and talking to him many times. He is a born again believer. And so the end is not death for him, but yet he'll go on to be with the Lord. But pray for, for the family and for what they're going through the coming weeks and months ahead, and also the employees as well. Pray for them and remember them in prayer. Other prayer requests, concerns, or thanksgiving that you would like to share with us this morning? Anyone or anything else? Yeah. Yes, it is good to have Jason's mom and dad with us, uh, Ralph and Gloria. It's good to have them here with us uh, this morning, so it's good. That is good. Others? Ms. Now. Well, we just remember the family in prayer, but it's good to have your family here with us as well. Your son and, and daughter-in-law and, and the family here. It's good to have them here with us and the family also. So it's good to have all with us. Miss Dolly. Okay, good. Good. Well, that's, well, that's a prayer of thanks. That's good. Did she have a good time? Yes, she did. She learned a lot. Oh, good. Okay. Well, that, that's good. That, that is awesome. So, just a prayer of thanks for that. Good. Other prayer requests? Okay. Both of them? Okay. We sure will. All right. Remember, remember Miss Lois in prayer, and also your dad uh, as he takes care of her and what goes on with that. We sure will. Absolutely. Other prayer requests? Mrs. Virginia. That's good. Yeah. Yes. That was good. They, they, had, a, they had a reunion uh, in Mississippi, right? And, and so they, you just said you had about 100 people over there? Yeah, so that, that was good. So they were able to fellowship together and everything so that that was a good time and safe trip and everything so that's good pray for pray for our brother felix he is in omaha um hopefully going to be watching the game soon but just remember remember him in prayers he's uh he's there and traveling but he and linda right okay so where did he go i mean his his wife right what just a man Is it, is it, now, there are some women that do, do like baseball. I guess she's not one of them. But <laughs> so anyway, so remember him and all, all those over there. We sure will. Yes. Other prayer requests? Concerns? Ginger? For those of you who have not, did not know that she snuck in here once, it's good to have Ms. Ann with us again. Really? Remember you and Grand and Jay and, and all the prayer and um, uh, let's continue my good prayer. Show sure up. Others. Chattanooga, they went to Gatlinburg, so they, they stayed up in that area about a little over a week and, 
had a good time and a good trip and a safe journey there and back. So uh, pray for them. Pray for both Jason and, and Melinda as they begin their walk together with the Lord and, and, with, them, and with them as they build their home and, them, and themselves as forward with the Lord. So remember them in prayer. Others. Billy Lynch, you had a reunion one last week as well, didn't you? Yeah, y'all went to Hot Springs, Arkansas? 60, okay. Wow, okay. That's good. That's good. So, prayer of Thanksgiving that your, your, your travels are safe and everything else. And uh, and any, how's the great grandbaby? They're coming tomorrow. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, we're good. But just remember them in prayer and, and their travels as well. So pray for them also. We sure will. Any others? Just remember each other in prayer. Pray for each other. Pray for God's guidance, grace, mercy, help. During the course of the week, you know, we never know what takes place, what will happen from day to day. And all we have is God's guidance and help. So pray for that. Pray for His help and for His guidance. Pray for the economy and how it affects different people throughout uh, the United States and what's, what is going on. You know, the people further up north and some parts of the uh, of the West are, are more affected than we are at this point, but still it affects everyone. And so pray for those who are in the midst of, uh, of this economic situation and for a good different things, so pray for them. Uh, remember those who do not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Pray for salvation for those who know not Christ, friends, family members, co-workers, uh, whomever they may be. Again, the many on our prayer list, we do want to remember these. Uh, those in the military, men, women, family members, pray for them. Missionaries, missionaries that are risking their lives, that are in different countries and different places and are proclaiming the gospel, pray for them. Pray for the Lord's work and what all goes on and goes, goes on with that as well. Again, the many people that are dealing with different physical problems and ailments, just remember them in prayer and pray for each other and lift each other up in prayer as well. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Almighty God, we come before you this morning. We thank you for your many, many blessings. Thank you for all that you have given and all that you have done in our lives. We lift up the many people that are dealing with different physical problems and ailments. Help them, be with them, touch them, watch over them. We pray for those in hospitals, nursing homes, and in their own private homes. We pray for those, Lord, that are going through problems, difficulties, storms in their life. We lift them up before you and pray for help, for guidance, for leadership. For those in the military, Christian missionaries that are proclaiming the gospel, we lift them up. For those who are in places of power, authority, and positions, we pray for guidance, for leadership, for your will to be done. We pray for those, Lord, where difficulties have come, that you'll help them and be with them, lead them, guide them, and direct them. Pray for your guidance and for your leadership upon all who are doing Vacation Bible School, by Baptist Church, as well as all area churches of all denominations, as they will be, many will be doing Vacation Bible School from now until the end of July. We pray for the efforts we pray for guidance, for leadership, and for health, that you may be glorified in all of that. We especially pray for those who do not know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Friends, family members, co-workers, children, young adults, whomever they may be, we pray for salvation for so many. We pray you will open their hearts, their ears, and their eyes. Traveling mercies, we pray for those who are away, for those who are traveling, and those who will be traveling. Watch over them and be with them and help them. 
Again, we thank you for your many blessings. Thank you for being with us. And Lord, thank you for this place and for all that we have here at Bayou Baptist Church. Thank you for being with us and for helping us. And we just pray for your presence and for your continual guidance here at Bayou Baptist Church. And Lord, if there is anyone here this morning that truly does not know you as their Lord and Savior, I pray that by your grace, by your power and for your glory, they will come to know you today as their Lord and Savior. This we ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. Al will come and lead us at this time in our offertory hymn. I stand and return to 533. He lives.
before we look into the Word of God, let me share with you a song, a familiar one is, In Loving Kindness, Jesus Came. <clears throat>
Jesus came. And he came because he loved. Not because we deserved it. Not because we earned it. But because he loved. He loved us just as we were. That's the most amazing thing about the gospel. That despite all that we are who we are, God loved us so much that he sent his son to die for our sins. In loving kindness, Jesus came and lifted us up to what he had done. Such an amazing God that we have. If you have your Bible this morning, turn, if you will, to Genesis chapter 12. Genesis chapter 12, the first nine verses, looking at Abraham, or Abraham. It wasn't called Abraham until later. Originally, the name was Abram. But God so called him Abraham later. Um, so we, we look at Abram and living by faith. And, and so from here, we get some ideas and some things concerning of how and what it means to walk by faith, live by faith, to obey the call of God. Notice, in first, beginning in verse 1 and following, the Lord had said to Abram, leave your country, your people, your father's household, and go to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. And I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on the earth will be blessed through you. So, Abram left, as the Lord had told him. Lot with him, Lot was his nephew. Abram was 75 years old. When he set out from Haran, he took his wife Sarai, his nephew Lot, all the possessions he had accumulated, and the people that had acquired in Haran, and his all of his servants, and they set out for the land of Canaan, and they arrived there. Abram traveled through the land as far as the site of the great tree of Moreh at Shechem. At that time, the Canaanites were in the land. The Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, your offspring I will give this land. So he built an altar there to the Lord where the Lord had appeared to him. From there he went on toward the hills east of Bethel pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and Ai on the east. There he built an altar to the Lord and called on the name of the Lord that is Yahweh. Then Abram set out and continued toward the gate. Understand that Abram or Abraham, as we're going to refer to him, because that's what God renamed him. He is basically the most important person in the Bible, with the exception, of course, of Jesus. There are 14 chapters in the Old Testament of Genesis that have been strictly written about Abraham. One chapter in Romans, written about him. One chapter in Galatians. And about 12 verses of chapter 11. What we call the faith chapters written about him. Do you realize that in Genesis, Genesis chapter, from Genesis chapter 1 through Genesis chapter 11, the time there is about 2,000 years. So up until this point, 2,000 years have passed. And then God called Abraham. Then the remainder of Genesis from 12 to 50, you have about 350 years. So basically, the, you could say the book of Genesis is about 2,350 years of history that has been going on. And not everything is told to us in the book of Genesis concerning with everything. It basically, if you look at it, it's a brief history of certain people and what has happened. But again, we see here how God works. Abraham fathered two great races of people. The Arabs and the Jews. Ishmael was part of the Arab country, and of course the Jews on the part of Isaac. As I mentioned this morning in the Sunday school class, Isaac is the promised seed. Ishmael was not the promised seed, as far as being the promised one coming from Abraham. Even though Ishmael came from Abraham through Hagar, understand that he was not the promised one. This is something that Abraham and Sarai 
divine intervening on as far as doing it. It wasn't of God. But Isaac was the promised one as far as that. But still, nevertheless, from Abraham came basically two races, the Ahab, Arabs, and the Jewish people. And even today as well. Understand that Abraham is the father of all people. As even as it says here, the Lord says, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to be with you. You're going to be the father of all. Even he told him later on as well that he would be. Spiritually, we need to understand that he is the father of all who truly believe in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. No matter what nationality or race you may be, all who come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, Abraham is your spiritual father, basically, coming from him. See, we are blessed through Abraham, as he says. You will be a blessing to others as well. So in essence, what it is and what takes place, as I mentioned also to this group this morning as well, is this, the fact of who well, are we now in Christ Jesus? Now we are Jews. We're no longer the Gentiles that we used to be. We are now Jews in the sight of God. See, that my wife always likes to hear that. Likes to hear that. See, so, so we, the true Jew is all those who do believe in Jesus Christ, who are after the, the line of and with Abraham as well. All who follow Jesus Christ are basically from, it all, it all goes back to Abraham, if you look at it. And even later on, you'll see after chapter 12, the covenant relationship that God had with Abraham and how indeed God blessed Abraham and so forth. So you see, everything trickles down from, and this is the beginning of what is the, the people of God. And all who are a people of God through Christ Jesus are descendants of Abraham spiritually. You may not be physically or literally wise as far as born into that, but spiritually, when a person comes to know Jesus Christ, what happens is they are linked to Abraham. All the way back to this promise here. What does it take place? Concerning. Him. And so, in reality, I who was not saved, but saved later on, was a Gentile, am no longer a Gentile, but now I am a Jew in the eyes of the Lord. And my father, spiritually, is Abraham, but ultimately God is our father of all. So today, by God's grace, what I want us to do is to look at the call of Abram and also to see how, as examples, fathers and even would-be fathers, how we are to live by faith. We're not just the fathers. This is for all people. How we are to be obedient to God. How we are to do what God would have us to do in accordance with what God here has so given to Abram that we can apply in our lives as well. In order to live by faith or walk by faith, the first thing you need to do, if you notice in verse 1, is to leave. Leave your past. Leave the things that may hinder your walk with God. Notice what God told Abram. He came to him, he says, leave your country, your people, your father's household, and go to the land I will show you. Notice, leave it, leave it, leave it. Don't, don't stay here. See, God came to Abram and told him to leave everything and, and everything that he had. His home, his family, now, not his wife. Now, what I'm talking about when he says leave his, his family, he's talking about his father's family, his relatives, the people there. And we'll see that in a few minutes as to why. See, understand. Why did God want him to leave his home? Understand that at home you may, be, you may get complacent. You may get into a routine to where when God says, okay, here's what I want you to do, you say, no, Lord, I have this routine. And so I do it this way. And you may say, no, Lord, I don't want to do it that way. See, and God says, here's the way I want you to do it. So God wants him to leave anything that may hinder him. Even the family. A family will have influence upon you or what may be contrary to what the Lord may want to do in your life. Your own family. Now I'm not talking about a wife. Here he's talking again about maybe his brothers. 
his cousins, aunts, or whatever the case may be, how many relatives he's got. He's got a whole slew of families living there. Understand that family, that families do have an influence of what we do and what we don't do sometimes. And God wanted Abram to leave all of those things, all of those things that he had become comfortable with, and just concentrate on what he wanted Abram to do. These things may hinder his walk. Understand, Abram's own father, Terah, worshiped false gods. And so this influence upon Abram, God did not want. He was an idol worshiper. He did not worship the one true God. Understand, God is a jealous God. Many people don't even realize that today. They believe that they can worship God Almighty and plus all these other gods that are in the land. It's not true. God is a jealous God. You cannot serve more than one God. God is a jealous God. Remember, what is the very first commandment? Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Very jealous God. He gets angry and upset. And so here, he's moving Abraham away from those things that will influence him to hinder his walk with the Lord. And God says, I want you to go to this land over here. And so we see here, God is calling Abram to a new life. He wants Abraham to start all over again. And to start with him. And God wanted him to separate himself from these ungodly influences. Do you realize that today we have many influences in our lives and things that happen in our lives, and some things are ungodly influences that should not even be there? Think about it. Think about the, the people that come in our lives. Think about the things that come into our lives, the influences that happen, and what it does to us as a people, as a person. And so God tells Abraham, I want you to leave all of this. I want you to start life anew again. Leave all of these things here. Now there were some things in Abraham's life that was good. But there were some things that was not good. But God wanted Abraham to start with him, to walk with him. Many times we too, we need to leave the past and walk with God. Sometimes, sometimes God even relates to us, speaks to us, either through His Word or maybe through someone else. He tells us, you know, what's going on right now in your life is not where I want you to be. You need to leave this stuff. You need to put it behind you. You need to get rid of it. And that's what God was telling Abraham to do. Leave the past. Put it behind you. And go on. Again, today, there may be many things that are hindering your walk with God. Things from the past. And God may be saying to you, leave these things behind and follow me. Maybe it's even the fact that God's even calling you into salvation, saying unto you, come unto me. This is Jesus did many times in the New Testament. Through the gospel, when he walked upon the earth, and he told people, follow me. Even the rich man who came to him and says, Lord, what must I do to earn eternal life? Jesus, of course, knew the man's heart. And he told him, he says, you must do X, Y, Z. Oh, I've done all of those things since I was a child. Of course, he did not. Jesus knew this. He could not keep them. Because you see, no one can keep the law. No one. No one can keep all the commandments. The Word of God in James says that if you've broken one, of the commandments of God, you've broken all of them. That's why, that's why Jesus came. He came and died on the cross because the commandments couldn't save us. We talked about that in Sunday school. The law was never meant to save. It was always to show us, I'm a sinner. How far I've, I've fallen. Or I've always missed the mark somehow. I always just miss it by that much. But I always miss the mark. God may be saying to you today, come, follow me. Leave all of these influences behind you. Secondly, in verses 2 and 3, notice God wanted 
Abraham to learn God's way. Learn his way. God's way. You know, God gave Abraham these promises of blessings. You notice these things that God told him that he was going to do? Notice he says, I will make you into a great nation. Now, who is Abraham at this point? He's only one person. It's he himself and his wife. That's it. God said, I'm going to make you into a great nation. Not only is he going to make him into a great nation, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to make your name great. You will be a blessing to people. And wherever you go, and whoever does anything to you, I'll take care of them. Whoever curses you, I'll curse them. And all the peoples on the earth will be blessed through you. Such an awesome thing that we see here. See, God here is revealing to Abraham, take up my way. I will bless you. God was asking Abraham to trust him, not his family, not the people in the land, not even his possessions that he had. God says, trust me. God was also asking Abraham to trust his very word. God was asking Abraham to depend upon him totally. Leave everything you have and lean upon my way. Trust me totally. When you can come to that point in your life where you can trust God totally, completely, you know, you're truly all walking with the Lord. That's what we need to come sometimes in our life. Sometimes things injure us in our life, family or possessions or other things, and we're not walking totally with God. We're not walking totally with Jesus Christ. You need to come to that point where you totally walk with Him. See, God wanted Abraham to learn of his way and to do his way and not the way of the world. Today we're taught into to do, to do basically two worlds. God's world and the way of the sinful world. There are two roads that we try to walk down and we can't do it. It's either you walk God's way or you don't. You try to walk the other way and if you are truly born again believer, Chances are you won't be happy going the way of the world. But you see, the way of the world, and you can see it especially today, the way of the world is sad. Because you see, they're contradicting the things of God. You see, so many people that aren't happy. And I believe that the reason they are is because they're walking in the ways of the world and not the ways of God. God wanted Abraham to be happy. Truly happy. And the only way he can do this is by doing, by going the way God wanted him to go. See, we need to learn God's way and also to trust God and his promises. This is what God wanted Abraham to do. Trust him. How? Unseen, unexplored, and unhindered. Go to a place I will show you. Abraham had not seen any of this. They had no idea where he was going. And God was telling him, I want you to lean upon me. Again, like unto Abraham. For me as a Christian, when I was 19, 20 years old, the Lord came into my heart my life. What, was, what did it mean? It meant taking him at his word. When a person becomes a truly born again believer, what you're doing is you're taking God at his word. This is the word of God. It's written here. And he tells us, trust me. Trust me and my word. What he's telling Abraham. See, I have never seen Jesus Christ. I've seen pictures of Jesus. There are different pictures of him. But I have not physically seen Jesus. And I don't know if anyone here has. If you have, I don't know. But I'm not. And so what we do is we take what is written here be the true word of God. And we rest upon the word of God. And in his promises it says, if you will confess your sin, if you would believe that Jesus Christ is in fact the Messiah, that he died on the cross for your sin, you will be saved. You see, your salvation is not based upon your works. Your salvation is based upon grace. The promise of God through Jesus Christ. As it says, for we are saved by grace, not of works, as any man should go 
follows. Jesus said, the word of God says, that if you come, come to me, you will be saved. See, we're taking him at his word. Sight unseen, unexplored, unhindered. The same thing here we see with Abraham. Telling him the same identical thing. God is coming to Abraham. And God is simply saying, here's what I want you to do, as he does to us. And this is what I'll do for you. You know, it's the same thing. Faith, trust, coming unto him. Believing what he says. Now, understand what is going on here. Abraham is 75 years old. God comes into him and tells him, I want you to believe everything that you, that you know. Your very life, your very existence. Believe it. Please, Lionel, Louisiana. I want you to go all the way up until Alaska. Never see, I've never seen Alaska except for pictures. Or maybe God is saying, okay, leave slide out and go all the way to who knows where, out, further up the wall, even further than that. And that's what God, Abraham is going through his mind here. Leave my family, my brothers, my cousins, my aunts, my leave everything that I have, everything that I've built up here, everything. And you just want me to leave. And this is what's going through the mind of Abraham. And this brings us to the third thing that Abraham did. And so, if you notice in here, what does it say that he did? And it says in verse 4, in verse four So Abraham left. Those three words. So Abram left. He packed up everything. It was like you see maybe sometimes in the movies, in the combo movies and everything else, when a person went from one place to the other place, they packed everything up in a covered wagon, and he went. went and many, many years ago, they would always say, go west, young man, go west. Well, some families did that. Packed up everything in a covered wagon, and they went west. Unseen. This is what God is relating to Abraham. And so what does Abraham do? And that brings us to the third thing that we need to understand. Let us walk by faith. Too many times we walk by sight. We don't trust God. Let us walk by faith. Abraham did. He was obedient. He put his trust in the Word of God. Not in the Word of man, in the Word of God. There's a difference. And I'm telling you today, don't put your trust in my Word, but put your trust in the Word of God and what it says. God's promises. He's relying upon what God has told him, what God would say. And so what does Abraham do? He starts his walk with God. Such an awesome thing we see here. It says, so he left, as the Lord had told him, Lot with him, and Abraham was 75 years when he set out from Haran. He took his wife Sarai, his nephew Lot, his possessions that he accumulated, his servants, and all that he acquired, and there he went and set out for the land of Canaan, unseen. Never been out of that place. He's had all that security and everything else around him. Now he was going out by just trusting in God and his word. Such an awesome thing. He obeyed the word of God and he walked by faith. He did not lean on his own understanding or even the understanding of others. Can you imagine? At 75 years old, even back then, I mean, 75 years old was still up in age, but he lived to be 149, I think it is, somewhere around there. But still, even at 75 years old, his wife Sarai is 65 years old. They had no children, they had nothing, but yet, he's taken the word of God. He's behind all of his family, his home, his land, and everything. And what has he done? He's committed his walk to the Lord. He is essence in saying, Lord, I'm committing myself and my family to you. I am putting myself here, and I am placing myself by faith upon the promises of your word. We can do the same thing today. The words of God are sure. They are more sure than even the stock markets today. 
and more sure than anything that you may even find in the world today. So, much, so many times people will let you down. So many times things will let you down. But understand the Word of God never let you down. God's words are sure and guaranteed. Because you see, the Word of God says God does not lie. God cannot lie. It's not in His nature. So if God says, I promise you this, you can guarantee it. Who is it that does lie? Satan. Satan lies. He whispers in your ear and he says, God really doesn't mean it. God really didn't say that. Remember, go back, I always love to go back in the garden. Because you said that's where it began. And what did he do to Adam and Eve? Especially what did he say? Did God really say? You see, that's what we need to understand. Here, the word of God is, did God really say? Yeah, God really said. And Abraham is, is here saying, I am going to walk by faith with the Lord because he really said, go. He really told me to go. So he and his wife, his family, they are committing their lives to the Lord as well as their future. Their future to God. Not to man, but to God. Again, he had no idea what awaited him. He, knew, he had no idea what, 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 what was around the corner. You know, today, I have no idea what's around the corner. Today, we have no idea what will take place after we leave here. What will happen tonight, tomorrow? All the Lord tells us to do is to walk with Him and trust Him. This is what He wanted Abraham to do, and Abraham did. Abraham chose to follow God and not look back. He rested upon the Word of God. I truly believe today people are not blessed. People do not grow in the Lord. People are unhappy. And I think the reason is is because they are not resting upon the Word of God. Instead, they're resting on things in the world. Look at what the world has to offer you, say. Yeah, they can't all give you eternal life. But there's so many people are looking at things in the world rather than what God has, or what God is doing as well. Abraham is resting upon the things of God, and I believe that Abraham at this point is happy in his life because he is resting upon the promises of God reason we don't is because we're not resting upon the promises of God. We are not walking by faith. Instead, so many times we walk by sight. We look at something, we say, ah, I just don't know, that looks so good over there. And God says, no, but I want you to go over here. Yeah, but this looks so good over here. You're, later on, you'll read the story between Abraham and Lot. When Abraham and Lot they grew together, his nephew. And Abraham told Lot, pick whatever way you want to go. You pick this way, I'll go this way. You pick this way, and I'll go this way. Rather than consult the Lord, Lot looked over. And he saw how green and plush the places of Sodom and Gomorrah were. And so he chose the places of Sodom and Gomorrah. Without consulting God, we all know what happened. Because of you see, we need to walk by faith and trust God and not upon the things of the world. It's good to have things in the world, don't get me wrong. It's good to have these, but not to put your trust and your hope in them. They only, they only last for just a short time. Think about how long we, we're here upon this face of this earth. Some of us. Some of us. Only here for a very short time, maybe a few years. You have people that may be here maybe 20 years, 30 years, 40, 50 years. No one, very, very seldom does anyone live past 100 years old. Every now and then you hear about somebody, they get to 105, 101, or somebody, no one lives past 100 years. What happens after that? See, you're only on this earth just a short time, a short while. You 
journey this life for just a short while. And we're to journey with the Lord, not the things of the world. But notice also, as we journey in this life, when Abraham went to the land of Canaan, who was there with him? In verse 7 it says, The Lord appeared unto Abraham. See, Abraham, even though he walked by faith, and he journeyed to Cain, he went by himself. The Lord was there with him, watching over him, and guiding him, directing him. The same thing today. I'm not journeying by myself. The Lord Jesus is here with me, guiding me, directing me. Sometimes we may not choose the things of God. But still, the Lord is there with us. Even Abraham, if you look at the life of Abraham in the 14 chapters of Genesis, you'll see he wasn't a perfect father. He wasn't a perfect person. But yet, one thing that remained perfect was the fact that he believed in, in the one true God. And God watched over him and God was there with him. God reassured Abraham here in verse 7, I will be with you. Wherever you go, Abraham, I will be there. And you know what? I have the same assurance of Jesus Christ. He said the same thing before he left. He says, Lo, I will be with you always, even to the very end of the age. And you know, one day he's coming back again. I don't know about you, but I think it's very soon. You see the way the world's going to its taking place and everything in that whole world? I don't see where it's going to be very long, but I could be wrong. And that's okay. Many have different ideas as for what it is. But, here's the thing. No matter what happens in the world, no matter what takes place, because in fact Christ lives in my heart and my life, He is always with me. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Guiding me, directing me, and leading me. We journey in life. How we journey in life. Whether with the Lord or without the Lord. We live by faith. Or do you live by sight? Do you truly look to Him? Have you left everything and followed Him? Some of the disciples you'll see, Matthew, he told them, come, follow me. And he said, Matthew left everything and followed Jesus. Peter, James, and John, they were fishermen. Jesus came to them and said, follow me. They followed Him. We need to throw off anything that may hinder our walk with the Lord. But of course, where it begins is that the Lord Jesus Christ needs to live in your heart and your life. Taking it by faith, also trusting that this is the Word of God. And what He says here is true. Believing the promises of God. Do you truly believe in Him? Do you know Him as your Lord and as your Savior today? Let us stand. Almighty God, I pray we come before you, as many have heard, and as you have spoken to some here, if all, and I pray if there's anyone here today who truly has not allowed you to live in their heart and their life as Lord and Savior, I pray that by your power, by your grace, that they will indeed, that you will come and live in their hearts and their lives today, for they, for they have not tomorrow, all they have is now. And so, Lord, I pray for each and every one, and I pray for your grace, for your mercy, and for your help. This we ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. Prayer to hymn number 300. As we sing both stanzas without him, hymn number 300. If God in Christ is speaking to you today, come. If you come as we sing, just these both these stanzas of 300 without him.